I want to start off by saying thank you so much for coming into the studio today. Um, before we get started, the only reason I get to do this today, uh, Collider being here at TIFF, is because of the House of Aurora. Uh, we're, uh, uh, we're partnering up with them, and so I want to give a huge thank you to House of Aurora. Who for also have cool jackets. Right. And, <laughs> yes, but, very cool jackets, I was, uniforms. I was going to say, actually, they have, um, I, there's supposed to be some gift bags, actually, and they I don't were, know. They right. Yeah. They've I already gonna, done so much for us already. Well, we, <laughs> Right. Um, but I will work on that because I do think there's supposed to be some, you know, but anyway, so they're being very kind. So I'm starting with that. Uh, I really dug your movie a oh, lot. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much. It, and the thing I, I had the advantage of watching. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I, thank you. Right. It's in stereo. <laughs> thank you. Right. Um, I really, I, one of the things, though, that I had the advantage of is I didn't know anything going in. So I'm watching it, and e as everything's happening, I have no idea of the twists and turns. So I don't want to reveal too much about this because that's half the fun of the, of the film. So how do you want to sort of tell people about it uh, and without, I guess, saying too much? Yeah, well, we love that sense of mystery, and we've been describing the movie as... A story about uh, a seven-year-old girl named Chloe who's being trapped in this ab abandoned, dilapidated house by her paranoid father, played by Emile Hirsch. And he's telling her, don't go outside, because if you go outside, y you'll kill us both. Don't even look outside. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, eventually she gets up the courage to go outside and escape, and she realizes her father was right. And that's kind of the, the first tease. You know, that's only the first 15 minutes of the movie, as you know, sure. Steve. Lots of stuff happens from there. Um, but that's kind of the, the, you know, the starting point. Yeah, the, the, the biggest issue, of course, is, like, how do you talk about, like, your characters? <laughs> how do you, because, like, and also even a trailer. Like, you have to tell people what the movie is about. But it's, like, it's one of those films where the less you know, the better. But it's, you know, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. Amanda? I mean, <laughs> we, that's what, Good luck. Comments on that? That's, well, that's what we love about films. It's so rare these days. Everything gets so exposed, and we, we just wanted to make something that is a mystery that's really satisfying as it, as it unravels and kind of reveals little piece by piece. And most of that's through the perspective of Lexi's character because we wanted to tell a movie through the perspective of a child uh, who's, as she's learning things, so is the audience. And so that was kind of the design from the very beginning. We're going to get to you in a second, but how are you describing Let's your characters in the movie without saying so much? Well, you're, you're, you're interview number one, so let's take a stab <laughs> at it. Let's see how it goes. Um, well, I play uh, Lexi's mom in the movie, and uh, there's a lot of question marks around the disappearance of my character, and it's kind of one of the main questions in the movie and becomes kind of a driving force for her character to figure out what happened to me? <gasps> Nailed it! <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> yeah, You're like, up! You're oh, up! Oh man, <laughs> man! Uh, uh, my character is basically like the, the leader of a military faction that goes to gather freaks, and um, that—that's one of the things that this character goes around to do. And that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Lexi, let's jump into. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about your anchoring this movie. This is, you know, if we don't believe in your character and what she's going through emotionally, the film doesn't work. So okay. talk a little bit about um, landing this role and th what it was like making this movie. Well, the process was not that hard. I mean, I auditioned and then I went to producers and then my mom got the lookbook of the movie <laughs> and I thought it was really awesome. So when I when I knew that I got the part, I was very excited, and I went to Vancouver, and yeah. <laughs> like um, a true pro. Right. <laughs> uh, we'll talk a little bit about what it's like on set for you and working, like, every day, because I'm sure you're not used to spending, you know, what, what are the working hours in Canada? Is it eight hours a day for kids, six? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Whatever the legally binding amount is, we used every second. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was very intense, right, yeah. Being, doing this role. There were some, intense, there were some in, more like, intense scenes than others, definitely. Like, there were some scenes that I had to 
like scream and like there were and there were some scenes that I got to eat ice cream so <laughs> they're the, very different scenes I was gonna say and those are the ones you circled in the script and said fun day yeah you know? exactly <laughs> exactly right um, I remember there was one day where she she had ice cream in her hand all day long and we wanted it to like melt and stuff and and so we kept saying don't eat this one Lexi and she oh I'm not I'm not and like she would like sneak like, little bites <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh, one of the things is you guys, one of the things I commend this film about is that you guys clearly had a limited budget, but you did the most with what you had. And one of the secrets is you limited locations. And, you know, uh, but, so talk a little bit about the challenges of trying to pull this off on a limited budget. And also because, again, no spoilers, but you have also VFX. <laughs> you know, there are some key scenes in this movie. Uh, yeah, I mean, when Adam and I came up with the idea for this film, we were actually really inspired by a speech that Mark Duplass gave uh, at Austin, where he kind of encouraged filmmakers to use what they had. Uh, whatever you have, go make a movie about that. Um, and so we started with an idea that was very simple, so that no matter what, we could make this movie. Uh, and yeah, it only has a few elements, but we really wanted to make sure it was grounded in the characters and the story, so that you weren't too restricted by the, the limited locations. I mean, it goes out into the real world. It's not all stuck in one house or all stuck in one thing like a lot of thrillers are. Um, it definitely grows and grows and grows as the movie goes. Um, and we had a lot of visual effects as well, but that's just to kind of open up the movie as it goes along. Well, yeah, we we started in a house, um, but we as we were writing, we kind of felt like, well, it really wants to go outside. You know, it really <laughs> wants to get out of this house <laughs> and go to new places. And and so we just went there and and we knew that that would impact the budget and be something that was a challenge for a, a small film like ours. But we tried not to um, inorganically, you know, trap it in one place for too long. Um, we wanted to kind of go where where the story and where the characters Except, felt like you know, they wanted Adam's to go. Adam's family owns a restaurant, so we're like, well, maybe she goes to a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, that was the Duplass inspiration. You know, he was talking about, oh, we had a puffy chair in a van, so we made a movie about that. And originally, you know, we started writing it when my son was four or five years old. And we're like, okay, it's about a kid in a house. <laughs> and that's where we started. Because um, worst comes to worst, we just make it with my son <laughs> and us in it. And then as we wrote the script and it got out there, you know, more and more awesome people kind of came on board and, and made it what it is. You, uh, I, a bunch of other questions, but you guys also have to share uh, where you two met because it's pretty crazy. Uh, so if you could share that story. Oh, I yeah. don't know this story. This is exciting. Oh, you don't know this? It's this is great. It's a pretty good story. Uh, we met on a reality television show uh, called On the Lot. America's Next Top Model. <laughs> America's exactly. Next Top Model. Yes. I won. Uh, <laughs> he came in second. Uh, <laughs> no, actually, it was the opposite. We were on On the Lot, which was a reality show, sort of like American Idol, but for filmmakers, um, run by Steven Spielberg. Uh, <laughs> a little we get, filmmaker. We get you that for the, for the side comments. He's a little up and comer. Um, he's gonna do great. And uh, <laughs> we made films every week, uh, and we were competitors, set against each other. But very quickly, we just started collaborating and um, and made movies together. As when we were on that show, and we became incredibly close friends. And we've uh, now started collaborating as co-directors. Yeah, over the years we worked separately, but we kind of kept coming back together and when we started thinking about like, what, what's the personal kind of passion project we wanna make? We just totally gelled on it and came up with this. Nice. I remember I remember watching on the lot and I was going, oh, I hope Zach beats that guy. <laughs> and then they're doing a movie together. I'm like, hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the record, he came in third and I came in fifth, so he's two two better of a film. It's not about that. It's but not together, about that. you know, yeah. that's right. You yeah. make number one. That makes sense. Uh, <laughs> what is it like for for the actors? What is it like working for two directors? Um, is it one of them has like? Di is it? Have, did you ever have a scene where one of them gave you a note and then like three seconds later another <laughs> one comes over and says the exact opposite? No. Or the opposite yeah. of that and I was actually really surprised yeah. by how cohesive they were in their vision and I I assumed going into it that you know oh maybe Adam will be the one that I ask about character stuff and Zach's the one that I ask about I don't know plot stuff but they I, but you <laughs> exactly where am I supposed to look but they really you, you, there wasn't one who specialized in one part they really were um, very equal partners and everything very cohesive in their vision and I was 
very impressed by that. Yeah, it was it was very cool to yeah. to see them work together and how how uh, fluid they were. They they were in and out of scenes, and basically their direction was right on point. But it was it's how they brought it to us. It wasn't confusing at all. It was it was really great to work with. Except that one time when I asked, I was like, "So I'm 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 Chloe's mom," and then. <laughs> Zach was like, no, 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 you're, you're her sister. And I was just like, but that, oh, that changes a lot. And so, you know, that day was a really hard day for me. We throw curveballs. <laughs> Keep on your toes. Right. Yeah. What was it like for you? It was cool having two directors because it's like one of them is behind the camera and one of them is like on set telling you your directions. So it was like having one director but everywhere. It's like, it's like having... Because they're, they're a lot alike, I think, because they're both very good filmmakers, obviously. And, yeah, it was, I think it was, it was really cool for me having two directors. Uh, for each of you, um, I, I always like ask about memorable moments from filming. Is there a day or two that you will always remember from the shoot? Um, yeah, actually, my birthday was on set. So. <laughs> Lexi turned it, eight while we were filming. Yeah. It was extra ice cream. I get yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Well, Mitch, one of the producers, I think, he got me like an ice cream truck that I got to like serve ice cream to people, which was really cool. And I got a cake. It, it was a really fun day on set. That was my birthday. I, and that was the day that she was riding around in a truck with Bruce Dern screaming at each other all day long. <laughs> that was your eighth birthday. Yeah, that was my eighth birthday. It was fun, though. It was really fun. I, that was a really good fun birthday. So that was a day that I'll always remember on set. I mean, I remember every single day because I was either sweating because we were filming in the attic of this really old house with no air conditioning, obviously. Uh, so I remember those days very well. Or we were filming in a mining tunnel with no light and dripping water everywhere. and. I was very cold. Uh, so it was one extreme or the other. They were all very memorable. I, I remember your first day, Amanda. You basically came to set and were like, welcome here. Um, let's drench you in blood and strap you to this surface here. Uh, welcome. That, you can welcome. take that a couple different ways. It, it's not the way you're thinking. <laughs> my, 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 when I, my first day on set um, and, you know, Bruce Dern was on set. I'm like, oh my God, legendary Bruce Dern. And then I, I sit with him in the green room and one of the second sentence, second sentence out of his mouth was like, I'm the only guy to kill John Wayne in a movie. <laughs> and I'm like, keep talking. <laughs> it, yeah, and it, hearing his stories is pretty remarkable. That was a great, great first that's day. that's the reason you paid to be in the movie. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> keep the money. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll say one of the highlights for me was there's actually a, a key scene between Emil and Bruce where they kind of go at each other. And it only lasts for maybe a minute in the movie, but we just let them go and they went at each other for like 20 minutes. And we just like, and everyone, we were, you, there was a lot of crew in the house. Also, our, off, our production offices were in the house as well. And all the people just started coming down to witness like these two amazing actors just, and like, just being like, I'm witnessing something right now. And it was so hard to, to kind of edit that down to what it is in the movie. But to see both of them just basically doing the script and their own stuff and just screaming at each other. And then they would go back to the beginning of the scene and they just kind of kept, they were just in this tirade to together and it was amazing to see. We, we did a lot of improv and uh, it was always exciting to see the new things that people added to the script to really bring it to life. And that scene in particular was one, uh, as soon as Bruce was cast, he's like, all right, who's playing this other role? Cause that guy better dance. He better, he better be able to dance. <laughs> and so that was, his, that was his favorite scene also, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, with everyone coming into the studio, uh, we've been playing something called Get to Know Your TIFF Attendee. Uh, these are some harmless questions, I promise. Oh, uh, but it's I for, love a good game. Right. Uh, it's really, you know, we'll find out in five minutes. Okay. Um, what TV, for, uh, for the actors, what TV show would you love to guest spot on? And for the writer-directors, uh, what TV show would you love to guest write and direct? Mm. I'm not sure. Yeah, <laughs> I have to think about this. I think for me it would be M.A.S.H. <laughs> oh my god. That's the reboot. A, the reboot. That's a great answer. Pippi Longstocking. Ooh. But not the German version because I can't speak German. <laughs> so, but I'll do the English version. Um, I'd say I heard uh, Spielberg's doing amazing stories again. And, I did uh, hear that. With, uh, with Apple, and we're available. Yeah, we're in, <laughs> we're in for that, Stephen. Call us. That was great. So, uh, so, like a TV show that I would like to guess? Sure. 
So um, my sister's on a Disney so show, so I probably want to guest star on that. <laughs> it's, um, it's new. Uh, um, it's called Sydney to the Max. Um, so I would probably want to guest star on that show. Nice. I think you have a family connection. We can maybe make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's possible. Wait, actually, before we continue the game, I have to do a follow-up with you guys. D didn't you just direct or are directing something for them? Yeah, we, we just uh, wrapped on uh, Kim Possible, live action version of the, the classic cartoon. So Yeah, which was a huge, amazing privilege. It's such a great source material. We're, we became super fans of the show, and we got to work with the original creators uh, and a lot of the original talent. Um, you know, we had um, the original Kim Possible was, did a cameo in the movie, and we had Patton Oswalt come and redo a character that he played in the, in the movie, and it was just such a fun world. Super excited for the for everybody to see it, and that's going to be on the streaming app, yeah. or yeah. Yeah. so yeah. sometime next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. uh, uh, Back you, to the game. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this business. Uh, stuff. Do you have a favorite sci-fi or fantasy film? Uh, First Blade Runner. Oh, good one. I would I'm say. You go. I would say Stranger Things. Mm. Oh, good I one. love Stranger yeah. Things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Back to the Future. Back to the oh, Future was good. number one. Probably Jurassic Park is in there as well. Mm. Yeah. Sesame Street. Wow. <laughs> you are good at this game. <laughs> uh, is there anything that you guys collect? Mm, good one. Mm. Lexi, do you collect anything? I don't know. <laughs> uh, I collect seashells when I go to the beach. Fun. Mm -hmm. My sister collects I collect old cameras. I also collect old cameras, but I usually steal a prop from every show that we work on. So I have in my house is all the different props from our movies. Uh, tears from the children I work with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a oh lot you got a lot on this movie. I got a lot. Because she cries a lot. It was a good haul on this my, one. Yeah, my, my stock went up real high, so <laughs> it was a good year. <laughs> I got nothing after that. I got nothing. That was, that was great. I'm What's really funny is the next uh, question is, and we got to wrap really soon, uh, is... Do you own any movie or TV show props? Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well. You wouldn't have hypothetically borrowed anything from the set of Freaks. Borrow. <laughs> um, uh, well, I did work on a movie called Little Mermaid with Shirley MacLaine, and they and there's a mermaid in it, obviously, um, and they gave me like a bracelet of the mermaid's tail. What? A little bit. And they also gave me like a doll that was on the set. So that was really nice too. So you do have some props. Yeah, I do. Nice. I have the only copy of the Mr. Snow Cone pop up book from Freaks, yeah. which I, 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 I like a lot. Um, as I said, I already have a lot of props from my own movies, but my one sort of related uh, cherished possession is an autograph from Carrie Fisher that she wrote because she was a judge on. On, on the lot, and I have an autograph of hers that says, to my favorite director. Oh, so that is He great. won that one. <laughs> you do the math on that one. Um, yeah, I mean, I got nothing funny for this one, and I, and I have no props. Apparently, no one likes me on the, the films I work on. No one's giving me bracelets from Mermaid Tales. I, I uh, stole, I shouldn't say stole. No, you should know you borrowed. Oh, You're going to give it back. Right, yeah. Um, uh, I did War for the Planet of the Apes, and we had these arm extenders. And I was going to take both of mine, but I only took one because I couldn't find the other one. <laughs> and then I kind of hid it in my jacket and like, okay, I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Walked what away did you from do it. with it? I just did my house. Just I just have it. It's like, just, it's like an arm now, extender. Now he plays a one-legged ape a one around the house. One-legged <laughs> ape. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can answer this because I don't know if you have a phone, but uh, what's your background photo on your phone? Oh, mm. okay. <laughs> Mine's Amanda. <laughs> not creepy at all. No, not creepy at all. Mine is my adorable dog yes. who's got a permanent underbite and one wild eye. He's so cute. <laughs> His name's Daryl, and he's not up for sale. <laughs> uh, mine's me and my girlfriend kissing at sunset. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was <laughs> nice. I love that. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> my two boys. I've got two sons, so. I use my mom's phone a lot, but hers is like a purple and blue, like like it's purple and blue, and when you t like hold down on it, it moves around. Oh, that's So that's really cool, yeah. You don't have your own phone yet, Lexi? Not yet, no. That's good. Have that's you good. asked yeah. for one? I have. <laughs> <laughs> my, my birthday just passed, and I didn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Dad, are you listening? She's plugging for it's like It's okay, Apple. I got beats, it's okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> 
what movie have you watched? Wait, um, and this is my last two things. Uh, what TV show have you watched all the way through more than once? Oh. Oh, mine's uh, The British Office. Oh, great. Yeah, um, Real Housewives of any zip code. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple. Uh, mine's Firefly. Watched it three times. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Uh, I think I've watched um, a show called Castle. Definitely more than once. <laughs> a lot of the episodes. Oh, the once. one with uh, uh, oh, uh, Nathan Fillion. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Uh, <laughs> She's like, yeah, Nathan <laughs> Fillion. We go back. <laughs> exactly. He actually auditioned for this movie for Emile's part. <laughs> Oops! Hey, Nathan. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, <laughs> that was great. That was so great. Uh, what movie have you watched more than ten times? Oh, oh. Boy. Little Mermaid. Truly, I mean, he was listening to Hamilton on the car ride over here, so I believe that you've yeah. seen Little Mermaid. I, I love that movie. Um, uh, but why wouldn't that's a don't judge me, man? Oh, no, no, it's fantastic. It's great. <laughs> That was uh, the beginning of the renaissance of Disney animation. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. And that's not a joke. That's bad. I love, I love that movie so <laughs> much. Uh, Goonies, Back to the Future, mm. Jurassic Park, The Matrix. Uh, All more than ten. Yeah, wow, you got um, a lot of wow. time. The uh, Pulp Fiction, and I've watched the extended edition Lord of the Rings all the way through in one day, three times. <laughs> you have me beat on that. I think I've done it twice. That was, that was, that was a thrilling Besi <laughs> Besides those classics of our childhood, one movie I keep coming back to again and again is Brazil, that I just oh, wow, always yeah. find something new and to appreciate. I watched Frozen a billion times. Yes. <laughs> I am not surprised in the least. <laughs> yeah, I've watched Frozen probably 30 times, and that's not over-exaggerating. So you're basically, you're counting the days to the sequel. Yes. You, you know they're making a sequel. Did you know that? Look at her face. <laughs> <laughs> you are? Yeah, no, they really are. They're making it as we speak. It's coming out, I think, next year. Melted. Right. It's called, <laughs> called Melted. Well, because it was playing on the TV in my car. So. No, no, totally. I, I watched it everywhere I went. Totally. So. I'm, I'm letting you know there's a new one, and it's a sequel, That's and it comes cool. out next year. We're going to watch it. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, on that note, I have to say uh, thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming in and uh, answering some of my fun questions towards the end. Again, a huge thank you to House of Aurora for being a great sponsor. Yeah. And everyone should see Freaks when it's eventually playing uh, in their area. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so thank much, Steve. Thank you, really Collider. Appreciate it. Thanks to Collider. Thank, thank you. You guys have been awesome. Uh, so far. <laughs> uh, on that note, uh, thank you.